Let's talk about NVIDIA investing $5 billion into Intel, yeah. which seems to be the, 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 the very bad news for one AMD. Although AMD has been kicking enough butt over the last five years that I'm... I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of interested to see the showdown. Anyway, let's let's get into the t- the details. Nvidia will invest five billion in Intel's common stock as part of a plan to jointly develop AI infrastructure and personal computing products. So, it's been talked about endlessly how Nvidia would love to be a CPU company, right? They tried to acquire ARM. Um, there was, there's always been sort of rumor mill scuttlebutt uh, about them, you know, wishing they had an x86 license and, and thinking like, yeah. hey, we're a fabulous GPU manufacturer. Why shouldn't we be a fabulous CPU manufacturer? Um, well, this might be the way for them to get in. Rather than acquiring an x86 license, which... To my understanding, no one but Intel or AMD or, man, who's the last one? Was it uh, Via that still had one, but then that became Centaur, but then that maybe is deprecated? I don't know. There was was a third. Something like that. There was another. Uh, But basically, it's just Intel and AMD, and my understanding is both of them have no ability to to sell or assign or otherwise grant their x86 license to anyone else uh, because they basically decided hmm you know what would be better than you know everyone else being able to compete being a duopoly that was legal uh for reasons that i'm sure make sense to someone uh anyway the point is that there there was no this could be the way for nvidia to gain access to intel's x86 license the access to the ability to build x86 based products without actually acquiring it um fascinating so intel says it will design and manufacture custom data center and client x86 cpus with nvidia nvlink as it's part of the deal okay that's pretty cool because nvlink is kind of badass (laughs) like and in the data center like you think of the benchmarks that you do on a CPU that you care about as a gamer, right? Like how many FPS do I get in this game or how many Cinebench render points do I get or how fast can I calculate, you know, pi. In the data center, the actual raw performance of your CPU cores is far, far less impactful in many cases than the speed of your interconnects and how quickly you can get access to other resources within the rack or within the data center. NVLink is kind of flippin' goaded. Yeah. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, okay. Client CPUs will be x86 SOCs with NVIDIA RTX GPU chiplets. Whew. Do you guys remember... Luke, do you remember that Intel Nook that had an Intel... Oh, my God. Do you remember that Intel Nook? So remember when Intel made those little micro PCs? That Intel Nook that had an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU on the same package? Oh, yeah. That, like, unholy Satan spawn of an SoC? It was pretty cool. And that was at a time that AMD's GPU technology was really not keeping up. Intel CPU plus NVIDIA GPU on a single chip? Or, sorry, the, the word chip has a lot of room for interpretation here. On a single package? Package, yeah. Woo! Woo! Jawa Juice pointed this out, but handhelds, that could be interesting. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, ARC, pretty good. Yes. Is NVIDIA's GPU tech a little better? Yeah. Dude, if sure. I could freaking if I could have oh man, like Intel's uh, Intel's last gen mobile chips are actually super efficient. It's just like it's hard to care about them right now when their desktops are so far behind, and you know they're they're losing their their lead in in server market share for the first time ever. And like there's all this like terrible terrible news coming out of Intel, but their their last gen their last gen notebook chips are actually like pretty damn decent. And so if we could take that performance and efficiency throw like a latest gen nvidia gpu on it like man you look at look at switch 2 
Look at how flippin' efficient that thing is, how skinny it is, how little cooling it needs. And yeah, there are definitely issues with it. I wish it had the same battery life as the Switch OLED, for instance, but it, it doesn't. Um, and for what it is, like, man, is it ever a pretty cool little device. Yeah. That's based on old GPUs. Whereas, like, because that's, that's Nintendo's way. It's like, I don't know, give us whatever you were throwing away anyway. You know? Come on, Nintendo. <laughs> But if you were an Asus or an MSI or something like that, for instance, and you were building a new PC handheld with, oh, I don't know, maybe the new Windows interface that's supposed to be debuting on the upcoming uh, Xbox Ally X, ROG, whatever the thing is called. Uh, we, we've got it. We've got it. We're going to be playing around with it later on the show. Like, with the latest gen tech, dude, uh, I... I love handheld gaming, so I'm very excited for this, if that wasn't already clear. Anyway, we are just weeks past the U.S. government making an $8.9 billion investment into Intel common stock, which was roughly a 10% stake, which means, and this blows my mind, Intel is now 15% owned by two entities, the U.S. government and NVIDIA. The last two I would have thought... <laughs> It's wild, man. In a joint webcast, <sighs> NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang claimed that their deal has nothing to do with the U.S. government. I wouldn't blame him for distancing himself a little bit from some of the controversy <laughs> around that particular uh, transaction. And AP News reported that the 23% stock growth represents Intel's largest one-day gain since, and this is not a typo, 1987. <laughs> yeah. Anyone, like, extreme long-holding Intel is maybe pretty stoked right now. Uh, yeah, stoked that maybe one day they could get back what they paid. Um, <laughs> will this deal involve manufacturing chips in the U.S.? That's unclear. Both CEOs wouldn't say anything concrete regarding this. Uh, <gasps> what? What? I don't he, think I... He had a thunk. Uh, okay, it's gone. I wonder Where if this is back? related to that thing I'm going to go do. I don't know. I don't even know what thing you're going to do. Luke. I don't know if I can talk about it. You're so vague posty right now. I told you though. Do you remember? Can you, can you rack the... Can I rack? It doesn't matter because I can't say it. So <laughs> 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 Anyways. Uh, anyway. Interestingly, recent reports have suggested that NVIDIA could release an ARM-based APU-powered laptop within the next couple of quarters. Uh, actually, a recent report suggested that NVIDIA was supposed to release that like ages ago, but that's a whole separate conversation. And The Verge's Sean Hollister put it aptly. NVIDIA and Intel basically said they're going to eat AMD's lunch. And that is in reference to Jensen on the joint call saying... There is an entire segment of the market where the CPU and GPU are integrated, and it's for form factor reasons, or cost reasons, or battery life reasons, all kinds of reasons, and that segment has been largely unaddressed by NVIDIA today. APUs, anyone? Oh boy. Intel told PC World the deal won't affect its roadmap, and specifically said they will continue to have GPU product offerings, which unfortunately, does not specifically confirm that ARC, notably discrete ARC, uh, which I am really rooting for, will continue to be that GPU offering. Reuters reports that some analysts have suggested this may be the first step in an Intel takeover or breakup. I actually am not sure that I agree with that. If anything, I would I think, don't think so. the U.S. government and NVIDIA are both stepping in to prevent that, is, I is, think so. is my read on this. This, this is not the same thing, but it feels like tangentially related to when Microsoft invested in Apple. Um, I, think the, I think the tech industry wants Intel to stick around. Um, the tech industry is healthier when Intel is healthy. There is yes. no question. No question of that whatsoever. And if, and if NVIDIA can find a way to help keep them around in a way that benefits themselves... It makes a lot of sense for them to do that. Yep. Um, so this, this honestly, when I when I read this, this was like one of the things in the tech industry that made the most sense to me in a long time. So, yeah, I think it's cool. I really, really hope that Arc continues to exist. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem here, uh, personally, but I, I hope it exists. Should we? Uh, should we? Should we make this into a weekly segment called "Is Arc in Stock at MSRP and Should You Buy One"? 
I like that. Yeah. I think that's cool. Look at this. Because, dude, e even using them for lossless frame gen and stuff like that, like, they are they are really cool. Here it is. Uh, new uh, Sorted by, featured, uh, you know what, let's sort by lowest price. Intel Arc B580. Tremendous GPU. Great GPU. Now in stock, you could get an Intel reference card for $249.99 with free shipping in the United States. You could get an Onyx Odyssey for... Two forty nine ninety nine. Also free shipping in the United States. If you're partial to ASRock and you want an open box Steel Legend, you could get that for two fifty nine with free shipping in the United States. Uh, oh, this one is only showing gray here because I actually have it in my cart. Here's the exact same card, not open box, for the same price with oh oh but you have to pay for shipping. Okay, all right, well whatever. Um, Onyx Lumi is two sixty nine. Okay, now we're getting past... Oh, here's a three-fan version for 269 That's pretty good. That's pretty... Oh, okay. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These, this is the triple fan and the dual fan. So you can get the uh, the triple fan for 259 open box with free shipping or 269 um, not open box with free shipping. I just want to check and see if they still have their... Uh, if they still have that cool Intel Days uh, game promotion going right now because they were actually giving away the new Battlefield with these. I don't see it, unfortunately, but hey, it's still a great deal. It's a great GPU at a fair price, and it's at MSRP. So if you or anyone you know is looking for a GPU right now, you've got 250 US dollars to spend. The ARC B580 can be yours, and it will not only give you a very satisfactory gaming experience in all but some pretty isolated edge cases where okay they've only been doing this a few years um but it will also hopefully help us make sure that oh my god we have another option for gpus yeah uh someone says look at the one in your cart uh oh yeah yeah okay that would have been a way for me to check the the promotion um, and no, it looks like, unfortunately, the Battlefield promotion is no longer here. What was it called? It was called Intel Days or something like that. Can't remember exactly what it was called. Oh, this is crazy. Check this out. Check this out. 70 plus people have this card in their cart right now. There is no <laughs> way that that is not because of WAN Show right now. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hold on. Oh, wait. No, hold on. There. Intel Gamer Days 2025 giving Battlefield myself, 6 bundle. Giving myself full credit here for that. Single-handedly selling more ARC B580s than anyone else on the internet. I'm quite sure so of it, it. it. It was called the uh, the thing that I just said, Intel Gamer Days 2025 Battlefield 6 bundle. It went from August 25th to September 14th, so it's done. Yeah, bummer. Still, dude. That was a wicked bundle. Dude, the top one? This is crazy. Cool. <laughs> what the heck? Oh man, this this is fun. This is fun. Let's play. Let's play. How many GPUs can we sell on WAN Show today? Um, <laughs> to be clear, Newegg is not the only place that you could buy an Arc. I have no particular loyalty to Newegg. The reference card, dude. Wow. I wonder <laughs> what's up with that. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, I do want to know though. I want to know. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ping. Oh man, I should have used our affiliate code. I think we have an affiliate code. Damn it. Whatever. The point is, I. I'm gonna message. Uh, I'm gonna message Colton. I'm gonna ask him to message our new egg contacts and see if we like sold a crap ton of arcs today. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> well, and and whenever we talked about gamer days, a huge spike. That would also be interesting. Arc B sales at 11 a.m pacific today okay yeah I'll, I'll i'll find out i'll find out i'm uh, i'm curious anywho why don't we move on to uh, oh yeah is there anything else you wanted to talk about with respect to the nvidia intel investment i think it's i think this is one of those it remains to be seen but you're always a fan oh, yeah. of making bold predictions and then being 100 percent right about them later so feel, <laughs> feel free to keep your streak alive <laughs> Uh, I'm hopeful for this in regards to keeping companies alive in order to keep comp competition strong. I, I don't necessarily, you know, I'm not saying either company involved here is necessarily my favorite ever. Um, bold, but bold words, 
decisive <laughs> words. But it's already an incredibly small space for CPUs and GPUs. And to have one leave who is doing both would leave us with effectively one CPU and realistically one GPU, which is not a good uh, not a good pool of companies. So we, we need Intel to survive. And I, I, this gives me some, some solid hope that there's actual possibility there. Because they don't, it doesn't seem like they want to, you know, keep a CEO around long enough to actually follow through on their vision. So, like, if they need shorter term things, maybe this is it. Uh, I don't know. Oh. There you go. Perfect. Good. Nice. I can't do it from here. So, thank you. <laughs>